something really cool came in today. The brusho I ordered from Dick Blick and I haven't even opened it yet and I should have been a smarty and I should have cut the tape before starting recording but I wasn't. I did at least however wait. Oh I'm gonna hack it open. There we go. To open it in front of you guys. So I have seen a lot of crafters and a lot of um, card makers talk about brusho and what brusho is is it is powdered watercolor pigments um, and what's interesting about brusho is there's multiple shades in t of each tone inside each bottle and it seems like each of these is sealed and I ordered the 24 pack for myself and it comes with a handy instruction sheet and it also demonstrates some of uh, the things you can do with it and what I'm most interested in brusho for is um, when you sprinkle it onto a wet surface or a damp surface or you um, spray water on top of it because since it has um, different tints of the same color inside you're gonna get a lot of variegated color which I variegated sorry which I thought would be really interesting now brusho isn't UV safe so you do need to seal it and I'll go over all of this later on when I'm um, demonstrating it I mostly just wanted to unbox it for you guys so you could see what you get with the 24 right is it 20 yeah 24 color set which is the biggest set they have. And what I usually do is I usually buy a small set and then I order colors piecemeal. But um, honestly, I did the math and to do that, I would have very quickly have come to the same total. So I figured I might as well go for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open, I think turquoise. And I'm going to show you guys why I am excited about Brusho as an artist and an illustrator. And it's got this like, let's see, yeah, this peel off um, seal to keep it from spilling in the package, which is nice. And the, the box from Blick that it came in said fragile. Okay, so I thought it had like a shaker cap. That's cool. You can still see the difference in the particles. I'm gonna have to figure something out, some way to disperse the pigment because I really don't want a lot to go down. I really just kind of want to dust it. Here's my water spritzer. Here's a pad of watercolor paper. And uh, I'm gonna use an eyedropper. Suck up a little bit of the pigment. And it's really hard to see when you, there we go. <laughs> there it goes, like lots of it. So you can see there's just a little bit on the paper. Zoom in, and I'm gonna cut my cap my brush out so it doesn't go all over the place. And then I'm gonna give it a spritz. Ooh, look at that! Isn't that neat? That's cool. Yeah, that's gonna be fun with all kinds of illustration because I've been looking for controlled ways to add some chaos to my work and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to let that dry and I might try out a couple of other colors. Um, this, is, this I'm pretty sure would not be very easy to swatch. What I might end up doing is um, doing, not on this, but on a different sheet of watercolor paper, a big one. Um, doing one of each color in an area, then punching it out and gluing it to the top of the cap. Seems like a good, 
a good way to do it. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come back with some other colors. I decided I actually really liked how that particular thing is looking and I wanna scan it and use it as a watercolor texture, like a digital watercolor texture. So I'm going to do a different one. And this is sea green and sea green really doesn't look like sea green at all, but I bet when we add that water, it's gonna, ooh, wow, see that? There's a lot of blue in that. That's actually a very pretty mixture. This is a really exciting product in my opinion. And I mean, you really spritz it where I have all the pigment right there and that, I mean, it starts to run. And um, it's actually more turquoise than it looks on camera. On camera, it looks um, very like hunter green or hooker green, but it's very turquoise. So this is cobalt blue. And in the tube, it looks purple. Just trying to disperse it a little bit better because I, I mean, I'm still just noodling around. So I'm not disappointed with anything, but I don't like that concentrated area of um, sea green right there. And it's gonna start to interact with the sea green a little bit. Yeah, this is like a, a great way to quickly generate some watercolor textures for digital stuff which even though I'm a traditional artist, I actually use a lot of these sort of things. This isn't particularly good paper, so I'm gonna use a little dog clip to hold it down and move it out of the way. And I think I have paper for one more, and this is a, a really old common watercolor pad that I recently dug up. And since I was doing blues, oh, they have a white too. I think I'm gonna try Brilliant Red, which I haven't even opened yet. And that's what Brilliant Red looks like in the tube. And I'm sure this will stain your fingers, so be careful. That looks like candy <laughs> or, um, like a uh, Kool-Aid even. And here's a scarlet. And once you get the hang of removing the protective seals, they're very easy. And if you wanted to travel with these, um, you could probably uh, tape the lid shut. That's what scarlet looks like. And you really want to keep humidity away from this a lot like candy too. In fact, on camera, they look like the same color. Um, Brilliant Red is a little bit darker. Scarlet is a little bit more of a like, orangey red than, an, than a dark red. And I actually don't like the reds as much as I like those greens and those blues were great. The reds are all kind of running into the same color. Might regret doing that. Because the paper is already buckling a lot. Yeah. So that's pretty similar to the other two reds we were just looking at. All right, so um, that was a very brief <laughs> introduction to Brusho. If you are a fine artist or a commercial artist or illustrator and you're interested in the product, I think there's a lot of potential for us, especially um, if you're trying to find ways to bring a little uh, spontaneity into your work. Uh, the only real problem I can see is it is very tempting to add too much water to your page and then you end up with a mess like I've got right there. Um, and if I had a paper towel handy, that would be, I'm gonna grab one. That's a very simple thing to clean up. So it's not gonna dry as vibrantly as it would have if I had just let it sit. And the brush pamphlet says you can paint with them as well. Um, but I really honestly prefer this kind of a 
a spontaneous sort of thing going on with my watercolor paper. So I'm Becca Hilburn. Um, if you like this video, please hit like. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Hopefully I will be checking in with you guys soon with a neat brush-o project or two. Alright, so have a good evening guys. Bye!